while music might play an important role, hearing aids are mainly designed to improve intelligibility in various listening environments. Some requirements for the signal processing are making speech audible and improving the signal-to-noise ratio with a clear definition of the target signal. This focus might not always provide optimal experience when listening at music, because listening intentions, acoustical properties, and variability of the target signals are very different from a listening situation with speech. This motivates the need to use a specific music listening program. When activated, music program applies changes on the frequency response, dynamic range compression parameters, and on adaptive features, which are mainly designed to improve signal-to-noise ratio, an aspect that is not systematically relevant for a music signal. These changes are evaluated with perceptual tasks like absolute or relative ratings or paired comparisons. They often include music genre as explanatory variable with the assumption that music genre might interact with the tested conditions. The sampling process needed to select the test signals is critical and faces some trade-offs. On one hand, the samples need to be short enough so that a direct comparison between the tested conditions is possible. But the sample must be at the same time representative of the genre if we want to generalize our findings. The selected sample used for the evaluation is defined by its genre, but we don't know how well the genre is defined by the selected sample. Generalizing interactions between test conditions and music genre is only possible if we have an idea about the variability between and within these genres. We built a database from two reference studies to explore the between and within genre variability using audio descriptors. The level of each piece or song was normalized on loudness. Three samples were then randomly selected. These samples were analyzed unprocessed and after amplification with fast and slow acting dynamic range compression. Amplification variability was then described to show how genre is interacting with the test conditions. Audio descriptors linked to variations in energy, spectrum, and noisiness were retrieved. They were obtained from the left and right channels separately and then averaged. The idea was to collect descriptors with a sliding window over the sample and then compute statistical moments to describe their distributions. Here is the distribution of the RMS for the unaided and aided conditions. So amplification increases the location of the distribution, but also reduces the dispersion of the RMS. It's a nice illustration of dynamic range compression. Amplification effect on spectral information directly depends on the hearing aid frequency response. Here the amplification was defined for N4 audiogram, with more gain in the higher frequencies. The mean spectral centroid is therefore increased with amplification, However, the change from unaided to aided is not systematic. The effect of amplification is reduced when the unaided spectral centroid increases. This leads to a smaller dispersion of spectral centroids, meaning less spectral variations when amplification is applied. The distribution by genre of unaided dynamic range and spectral information is in line with reference data, suggesting that while more classical genres have a larger dynamic range, more modern genres have more energy in high frequencies and a flatter spectrum. There were a lot of partial correlations between the features, like between RMS standard deviation and the peak to average ratio, or between the spectral centroid and the harmonic to percussive ratio. This motivates the use of a dimension reduction approach with principal component analysis to understand the main differences between the genres in the unprocessed conditions. Here are the mean values of individual observations per genre projected on the two first dimensions with a 95% confidence ellipse. Variables with a high contribution to these dimensions are plotted on the right. So the first dimension is mainly loaded with a harmonic to percussive ratio and spectral information. The second dimension with the within sample variability. Classical music genres are grouped together on the left of the first dimension, which is related to the low spectral flatness or high harmonic to percussive ratio. 
more modern genres tend to be on the right side of the first dimension due to more percussive sounds. Furthermore, they show more variability on the second dimension. The ellipses indicate that there is a considerable overlap between the genres, especially between the orchestral and pop genre, which are often used in the literature. In general, differences between the genre means are marked, however, within genre variability is quite high, so that the single random uh, sample might not be representative of its own genre only. Another interesting aspect is a within piece variability. The samples shown by a point were collected using a sliding window with a step size of one second over one piece. Audio descriptors are projected on the PCA dimensions for two orchestral pieces and two pop songs. The distribution illustrates the fact that within piece variability is not systematic. But when it occurs, then one sample cannot represent an entire piece and furthermore the entire genre. We want also to show the effect of amplification on the dynamic range and spectral shape. We start here with the unprocessed B variate distribution. For each sample, we compute the difference between the descriptors from the added N4 based amplified signal and an amplified signal with 0 dB insertion gain. The amplification effect is then averaged by music genre. The median effect of amplification with fast and slow dynamic range compression is shown here by genre. This direct comparison illustrates the fact that fast acting compression reduces the dynamic range compared to slow acting compression and that the magnitude of changes in spectral sound reads interact with music genre. This figure exposes the interaction between amplification and music genre. However, this is only a median effect by genre. There is a large variability of amplification within a single genre and a clear overlap between some genres. The effect of amplification on these descriptors is also more pronounced for more classical genres than for more modern genres. Our analysis suggests that music shows large acoustic variability within a song, a piece, and even within a genre. Boundaries between them are not clearly defined, acoustically speaking. It supports also the need to increase the number of tested samples and consider them as a random effect to reflect our findings. Effect of amplification is not homogeneous and will directly depend on the selected sample. In general, more information should be provided during the sampling procedure to ensure that acoustic variability found in everyday life is also represented in the evaluation. This would help generalizing differences found when comparing hearing aid settings.